So I'm going back to basics today with a centre pin reel and my trusty John Wilson Avon rod. Uh, I've got loads of these rods. I think it's the best selling rod in the world. Um, and rightly so, it's got a very forgiving through action. This one's a pound and a quarter. I know that when I hook into a fish that I'm gonna be confident of landing it. Centre pin reels can be a bit fiddly. They're not just for trotting on a river. I use them for a lot of stalking and a lot of tench fishing. Um, and I've used them on linear when I was fishing Hardwick and Smith for tench and all I caught was carp. And carp on a centre pin when they're up to 20 pounds was really exciting. And this old warrior was taken on bread flake. You don't get any more traditional than that. So let me explain how the lift method differs to normal float fishing. Normally with float fishing, you've got weight on your line that cocks the float so that just the tip is showing. And when the fish picks up the bait, then the float goes under the surface and you strike into your fish. With the lift method, what happens is the float actually rises in the water. And that's because the fish is picking up your bait, but also picking up a small weight that's quite close to your bait, and that causes the float to rise. Now, in some circumstances, when you're float fishing with the, with the lift method, your float will still go under the water. You know, that happens if a fish is feeding comfortably and swims off with your bait, and the float goes under, strike. But more often than not, it will actually rise in the water, and that's the time at which you, you strike. If you strike while the float is rising or shortly afterwards, more often than not, you'll be connected with your fish. The type of float that you use is entirely up to you. You can use wagglers or, or any other float. I use these Drennan drift beaters and have done for many years. They're perfect for this style of fishing. They've got quite a big tip, which is quite easy to see. Um, and they're held in position with float stops. And the reason why I use float stops is that means there's no damage to the line. Sometimes when you're using shot, you can actually pinch the line and cause a weak spot. With float stops, as long as you wet the line, there's no damage at all. So the float is held in position with three float stops, one either side of the float, and then a second float stop below the float. So three in total. And the reason for that is that sometimes you'll be hooking into a fish, they'll take you through the weeds or take you through the lilies, and it can pull the first float stop out of position, which means that your float actually would be over depth. With two float stops below the float, you can just very quickly pull everything down to its original position and you're back and ready fishing again. Then between the float and the weight that cocks the float there's absolutely nothing on the line, nothing at all. And your weight, now some people tend to use swan shot, I use inline olivettes because again it's not causing any damage to the line and they're also held in place with float stops one either side. And then below that, you've got your, uh, your hook and, and your bait. And the distance between the hook and the weight depends on, on, on how confidently the fish are feeding. If they're feeding very confidently, you can shorten that down. If they're not feeding confidently, you can actually increase that. But bear in mind that whenever you, in, you change the, 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 the position of this weight, you also need to change the position of the float stops that trap the float because you're also changing the depth, okay? Often when I'm fishing the lift method, I'll actually fish the float over depth and then I'll pull the line down until the float is cocked and trap it on my rod rest. So actually trapping the line on the rod rest with the rod on top. And that means that um, when I'm fishing a, a lake which has an uneven bottom, I don't have to keep adjusting the, the, the distance between the, the float and the weight to allow for that uneven even bottom. I can fish over depth and I can just tighten down if I need to. But the key really is to get the float just poking through the surface like this and waiting for that float to rise when the fish picks up your bait. And this goes to show how successful the lift method is for tench. Great way of catching. Well, I hope you found that useful, and if you did, please subscribe by clicking here. 
I've got other videos available that you might find helpful. So you can search on YouTube for Tight Lines with Chris Miller and you can see the other videos that are available. And there's more content coming every month. So thanks very much for watching. I hope it helps you put more fish on the bank. Tight Lines.